It had everything Kane Corns. They had their chances and it was, in your words, a version of a choke. Absolutely, Hutchie. For the second week in a row, I'm standing at the plasma looking at the dying stages for Carlton and what could have gone differently or better if they had their time again and unfortunately they haven't been good enough in these situations. So firstly, the lack of composure from Charlie Kernow in a couple of instances here. They just need to kick one more point. When you're watching these clips, you think they are one point off playing finals in the first time. Nick Dacos, how many times have I said you've got to put someone on Nick Dacos? This is from a kick out. No one goes with him, so one possession turns into two. Two possession turns into three and all of a sudden you go from a kick-out situation to scoring. Look at the score there. 17 points up, Carlton are at, with six minutes to go. Jamie Elliott, no body contact. What's his strength? Well, it's a run and jump. You had to put body on him. So he goes back and kicks the goal. All of a sudden, you're really nervous. Carlton do the right thing. They win a centre clearance. Chera was awesome. This ball just has to come to the ground from Durden. It just has to come to ground. Unfortunately, he is out, Mark. So watch again. Like Nick Dacos, that intercept mark goes straight through the middle of the ground where Collingwood have done dangerous. Quainor turns one into two and we play this out in fast forward and all of a sudden you go from another backline transition to that unbelievable McQuarrie goal. So Collingwood doing all the right things but Carlton have got their opportunities here to win it. Now we've got five minutes on the clock. They're still up here. O'Brien take the grass. Look at the grass you're a left footer and then you've got McKay on a one on one deep. Instead he goes short to the pocket for a 50-50. They need one point. Doherty you need one point. He kicks it out in the full and I was at the ground and Doherty goes what do you want me to do? Mate, you kicked it out on the full in that situation there. That's got to go there. Two minutes to go. He can go back and take 30 seconds off the clock and have a shot. These are all the mistakes, once again, that Carlton um, coughed up in the last minute. And then Maynard was awesome. Kicked through the middle of the ground. Leads to the Elliott goal. Once again, that's just got to go there. You've got to hit that kick. Moore's not even looking at it. Once again, he's got a set shot. Needs a point. Goes back. Mackay and kicks it. That's the game for the Blues. That's the season again. Yeah, it was a squandered moment. They've had a few over the last month, Matthew. Do you, how do you view the season for Carlton? Uh, as a disappointing one in the end. I think they improved a lot uh, after you know, from last season under David Teague. But I I've seen other teams who feel like they're on the right track, Hutchie, and they don't get back there the following year. So I reckon St Kilda were one who won a final, Caro, uh, didn't get there. Say even way back, the Adelaide Crows win a grand, sorry, make a grand final. What happens that? They haven't been seen since. The Bombers last year. So there's no guarantees. I think Port Adelaide should bounce back next year. So that's, that's a frustration part for Do Carlton. Do you agree with Kane that it was a choke? Yeah, uh, it... Yes, and it was last week and it was this week. And they've got the last two Coleman medalists. Uh, so last year in Harry Mackay and this year Kerno. And we spoke about... Good money tied up in these yeah, two. Yeah, good money, Kachi. And I can understand why in a sense, because of what they can do. But we spoke about Max King last week. These guys have got an issue too. So they need to win one game in the last month. And Kerno kicks seven goals, ten. And Mackay kicks seven goals, seven. The last two weeks, Mackay Kerno's kicked one, four and two, five. And they only need that one point Kane speaks of. So, so Craig's been talking about the salary cap issues facing Carlton next year and believes this might have even been their last big crack. What was your reaction to the seven-year deal for Kerno? Yeah, I was shocked by it. I mean, it's a six-year extension, so he's already got the one year for a yep. player that had played you know, 84 games through the course of his career. There was a three-season stretch there where he played only 15 games. So I hope he holds up. It's been an incredible season, but you know my bias against long-term contracts. I think they rarely, if ever, work out in favour of the club. So was it a wasted year or a worthwhile one for the Blues? Well, there's some positives to look at, isn't there, Lordo? And you've touched on that. They now actually have an identifiable brand of, of the way that they're going to play, and they are tough and competitive around the football. And that played out yesterday. I think their key position stocks are loaded. Weedering is just an awesome centre-half bat. You've got the two forwards Lordo spoke about, and De Koning is coming. But no finals is a massive loss because Patrick Cripps turns 28 round one. He's played in no finals, Hutchie. And that's the reason in these big moments they do make those mistakes because they haven't had big game experience. No, you're right, Kane. I don't think they know how to handle the big moments. And I want to touch on Collingwood. Uh, and so here's mine. So handling the big moments is the last one. And let's get to Collingwood now who have Scotty Pendlebury and Steel side bottom and guys like that who have been there. Carlton don't have that. And this is the reason Collingwood under Craig McRae have handled things. So this has to be scenario-based training. Then I'm not sure... Michael Voss potentially has gone to the lengths of, of what Craig McRae, because this is round 19. So they were gone, uh, they were down by 20 odd points and they came back from a kick in. So that's, they've done it from a kick in. Then we go to round 21. This is protecting a lead. So that the win, the previous one, this is to protect. They didn't even try and kick handball or mark the footy. They just said, let's lock it in. We're killing time this way. Elliot, 
got rushed out of bounds on purpose. This is the next play. Let's just keep leave, letting this ball bobble around. Let's keep it in top. Even young kids just diving on it just to lock that ball in. So that won them the game, soaking up the last couple of minutes. And then we go forward to, uh, obviously, yesterday's game where they've done it again. So the ball gets pumped in by Kerno, and they know we've just got to go straight down the corridor. Scotty Penelbury, look, he's ready to go. And then they've spat out the back, Ginevan and Jamie Allen, to create a 2v1 an astonishing coaching from Craig McRae, and that's why I think he's the coach of the year, Hutch. Yep. So you think that the Blues should scenario train that more than they yeah, do? Yeah, well, I've heard of scenario-based training, but for a team to execute it the way they are, this isn't luck. This is actually from their training he and how, Craig, how clear they are. Craig McRae said they train it every week. Yeah. Two minutes either side in the last two-minute scenario. Training. I'm sure many clubs do, but it's, they're the best at it at the moment, Kane. So, Archie, their opponents will be Geelong in, round, uh, in the first round of the finals, of course, at the MCG. Take you back to these comments. Firstly, from the coach, Chris Scott, after they played Collingwood earlier on the year and also their star player, Zach Tui. It made the win pretty sweet. Um, there was a hell of a lot of carry-on from them at certain stages. Um, so it was nice to see the stands emptying with five minutes to go um, after all the chirp we were getting on the sidelines. Collingwood play a style that's very, very hard to maintain and, and we had some confidence that if it did turn a little bit around the ball and around the contest that we'd get some good looks ahead of it. So it's on. I'm not going to be critical of that. I love it. I think it adds to the build-up to it. And what comments like that does, as we saw to a lesser extent with Port Adelaide this week, it keeps the players accountable on edge. And Collingwood, uh, sorry, Geelong will be ready to go. As well, a result. little bit of playing with house money about Collingwood in this final series yeah. too.